Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your Eric Ten Hag press conference reaction for the Aston Villa game at Old Trafford tomorrow night in the Carabao Cup or today if you're watching it a day late. A bit of a weird press conference but absolutely imperative that we do it because Manchester United did a really good thing today. They didn't invite journalists, they invited supporters clubs uh, members from all around the world to Carrington to ask Eric Ten Hag questions ahead of this game and fantastic, absolutely fantastic, massive advocate of this. Got to shout it out and some of the questions were fantastic but this for me is i don't know why the club did it i don't know what the purpose of it was but to be honest as somebody who's a founding member of a fan channel um or, or, or fan media or whatever you want to call it it's absolutely fantastic that you the fans all right you've got to be a member of the supporters club but maybe you should be um get the opportunity to speak to a manager and then expose the fact that your 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 knowledge and insight is up there with people who do it for a living. It was absolutely fantastic. Some of the questions he was asked. So we're going to fly through it. Uh, first question he was asked is any changes or injuries tomorrow night? He said, we've got to win. Eric Ten Hag says, we've got to win. So we've got to put our best players out on the pitch. Of course, um, we, we will have to make some changes, but I, I want to put out a strong squad. Um, and uh, yes, we've got a lot of games to cover, but Manchester United must win games. And I think Eric Ten Hag has always been very consistent like that. It's a refreshing thing. I think with Moyes, you know, with the underdogs, Solskjaer a little bit was like that, wouldn't commit. Ten Hag, in his short time he's been at Manchester United, has always been very consistent with this. Manchester United must win every game. Of course, we're not going to win every game, but it makes Ten Hag in tune with the fans because we know we must win every game. We know we won't win every game, but the, the ethos of Manchester United has to be to win every game. And Ten Hag never shirks that. Um, I would completely disagree with playing our strongest team against Aston Villa in the League Cup when we've got a must-win game against Fulham at Craven Cottage away on Sunday afternoon. But we still have strong players and I would hope that Mark Maguire plays. I would hope that Fred and McTominay play. I would hope that Malasia plays at left back and straight away you're resting four or five first team players anyway and you're still putting a strong team out. So I still think we can put a strong team out and get a result and uh, I think Eric Ten Hag you know, will do that. He was asked about the youth, which I'll come to in a moment as well, but in relation to in players being injured, bit of bad news really. He says Martial's on his way back, so you know, we saw Martial at the weekend, you would expect Martial to be back um, and play. He, Ten Hag said he will play more minutes. But with Anthony and Sancho, we still wait. Um, I don't. I said this yesterday. I don't think Anthony will be playing for us again before the World Cup. But we'll obviously go to the World Cup. And Jaden Sancho, whatever the issue is, it's illness. It must be quite a severe illness, um, or, or taking him time to recover from it. Because really, if you're Sancho, you've had a bad start to the season. You've lost your place. You're on the bench. You get ill, and then the right winger gets it injured, and there's a place there for you, and he's not back. So. He's got the incentive to be back because he'd probably be playing games, especially tomorrow night against Villa. You'd expect to start. So whatever the issue is with Jaden Sancho, and we don't know what it is, um, it's obviously a significant one because it's keeping him out. Um, the next question he was asked is, you know, how do you how do you react and feel about the Villa loss at the weekend? This is the first time we've had access to Ten Hag since then. Remember, these are fan questions. He said, um, look, we've had a lot of games and um, players aren't robots. So he's basically saying that we've had a lot of games, which we have, players aren't robots. Obviously we played Thursday night as well. Three, two and a half days later, you're playing Villa with a new manager in a week off. But that was it. That was the only concession he would give. Lots of games, players aren't robots, but we weren't happy. And we've made it very clear to the players that we weren't happy in our anal analysis of the game. Um, we want a reaction. And uh, we've got to get back to that winning attitude. And I love this about Ten Hag as well, because the Villa game was disappointing and I was disappointed and you were disappointed, but you understood it in a way. It's not acceptable, but you understood why it happened. Um, I think Ten Hag is saying that, look, we have had a lot of games and we're not robots, but I'm still massively disappointed. And we've made it very clear to the players that we weren't happy with the results. So, you know, he, he won't give any concessions. And the thing about Ten Hag is, and the people I speak about Ten Hag, who work with Ten Hag say, he is relentlessly obsessive about winning. He is impatient. He wants to win every single game. And there is no letting up of the... There's no understanding. Well, there is understanding, but there's no dwelling on that understanding. It's like, OK, maybe we, maybe there is a reason why we didn't play how we should have done, but we still shouldn't have lost. And that's what he's like. So uh, whatever you are as a fan, whether you demand we win all the time, you don't accept defeats. We've got a manager that doesn't to a, to a much bigger level. He is so determined to win. He is so impatient to win. And, you know, that sort of attitude 
Um, it might not be enough for United, but it's the right attitude to have as a manager. Um, he was also asked about what the importance of the League Cup is. I think this was a good question because for me, the League Cup is the lowest priority. I think top four has to be the number one. And there is a great question he was asked about what is a good season. And the, and the fan who asked it actually went in again and made him clarify, which we've not had from Ten Hag. So we'll come to that next. But League Cup importance, obviously top four and Europa League would be the top two priorities and the FA Cup's better than the Carabao Cup. Um, but what Ten Hag said about the League Cup importance, it's about culture. We have to win every game at Manchester United. Every game um, we have to take serious and we want to win this this year. And, you know, uh, realistically deep down, does he think that? You can't pick and choose as a manager. As a fan, we get the luxury of picking and choosing. And I would say for me, top four, Europa League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup in that order. I don't think you can win all four. So really... If we need to save uh, legs and energy, let's get out the Carabao Cup. That's a very logical way to look at it. But as a manager, you can't do that. You don't. You can't give up on the Carabao Cup because what if you get a difficult FA Cup draw? Or you get knocked out of the Europa League by Barcelona. Sometimes you know the, the. You can't. What I'm trying to say is you can't concede the the Carabao Cup now. You've got to. You've got to stay in it because. It's, a, it's very easy to sit here now and say, let's get knocked out the Carabao Cup. But what if we get knocked out by Barcelona? What if we get Man City in the FA Cup? We're out of all the cups and then everything's on top four. So, yeah, you can't win them all, but it's very difficult to prioritise when you are the manager. So I agree with him that. Uh, he was asked about young players and whether they'd be involved. And very good answer, actually. He says, look, I'm open to playing young players, but they have to be, deserve it and they have to be ready. Look at Ganacho. He deserved those starts, and he and he, and he proved he deserves those starts. Got a history at Manchester United of playing young players, and and that's what we want to do. But they've got to deserve it. You can't just throw them in on merit on um, because you think it's the right thing to do. And I think he's absolutely spot on with that. Um, he was asked what he said, what how he would define a sex, success, successful season. Uh, he said, "Look, win all the games," which people laughed at, and even he laughed at, but. I mean, that's the benchmark, isn't it? And he said, look, if you win all the games, you win the championship, which, you know, we're not going to do that. But the, the, the defining a successful season is winning all the games. Now, that that's not going to be realistic, but um, we've got to be in a position where we can win trophies um, in mid-March and April. So I think what Ten Hag is basically looking at this season is being in mid-March and April and still being in the top, you know, certainly the top four race, but deep into trophies and still in with a chance and, and and that would be a good season but then the follow-up question to that from the same person was but what is a success what is it that you're looking for from this season um and we've never heard this from ten Hag, so it was a good question and it was it was a good follow-up question he said look i want to win trophies um and top four um is is really important as well um, but it's going to be really hard this season. These, these are Ten Hag words. Um, many people are saying it's the strongest Premier League uh, in, in a long time. Maybe not in the title race, but certainly you have got seven clubs going for the top four this year. Obviously, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, Spurs and Newcastle. So it is a very, very competitive top four. Um, but I think what Ten Hag is looking for this season is top four and a trophy. And I think, you know, that... That might be a bit of a reach, um, but it's good that a manager's putting that down and saying it publicly because I don't think he's going to get... I think sometimes you can say, look, our aim is this year to get top four and then you don't get it and you look stupid. I think in year one for Ten Hag, if he says his aim is to get top four and win a trophy, I don't think he will. I, I don't think he will. He might get one of those things. I don't think he can do both of those, but he won't be criticised if he doesn't get both of those because... I think everybody does appreciate what, what a difficult season it is for Manchester United this year and Eric Ten Hag. Um, he was asked what he thought about the uh, first five months at Manchester United and how he's found it. He said, look, um, it's an ex it was always exciting coming in, but it's also very, very difficult. We're, you know, we we're very far away from where this club needs to be. Um, and you see it go up and down, which is basically the roller coaster, you know, good results, bad results. And that's part of what's going to happen. Um, we have to swallow those bad results. And, and, and sometimes you have to swallow those bad results to get better. Um, and we have to accept where we are and what's going to happen. But we have to work hard and make sure that, you know, we keep learning and, and moving forward and getting good results and getting better. And I think that I go back to what I said before, that people I've spoken to who, who work closely with Ten Hag have said that his 
drive and obsession is ridiculous levels. Um, and he is ridiculously impatient. And when you've got somebody in charge of the club that is like that, the fans can't really moan because he's, he's so obsessive about being where this club needs to be, just like the fans. It's all about whether he can deliver that and whether he gets the backing to deliver that. But, um, you know, a very refreshing question and a very refreshing answer that, you know, he basically said, look, it's, it's an exciting process, but it's very difficult. We, we, we want to run and we can't walk properly yet. Um, you're gonna ha we, ha we have to accept the up and down nature of it. Um, we have to learn from the losses so that we get better. And it is exactly what's happened over the last five months with Ten Hag, isn't it? We've had some really real glimpses of what we could do if we find consistency. But we've also seen that the squad is quite thin, that we're playing too many games, that we are still picking up bad results. Um, and that is the roller coaster of where we are. Uh, he was asked about the World Cup as well and what it means. Will players get a rest and how he's going to look over the World Cup? And he said, look, it's a real opportunity to reflect, um, look at the plans. How do we improve? Um, look at the younger players and give them some attention, um, plan ahead. Um, he said that the players that are getting left behind and there are some good players that aren't going to the World Cup for various different reasons, they will be given a bit of a break. Um, obviously got a massive season from uh, Christmas until May, it's relentless, so it's important that players get a break and, and those players will get the opportunity to have a break, a little break, and then they'll be back preparing to go to Spain for the little uh, pre-comeback uh, um, training, a couple of pre-season games, uh, sorry, a couple of games before that, uh, Cadiz and Betis, isn't it? Um, and that will be the plan for those. Um, we have to. He said. Also, we've got to have a plan in place for all our players who are going to the World Cup. We'll be monitoring game time, when they go out, um, and that will need to be managed when they come back as well. It's interesting. I was speaking to somebody about this the other day, actually, um, who, who, who's quite close to all this, and um, you know, in general. And I was saying, you know, what's the plan for players that come back from the World Cup, whether they're Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea players? And they were saying that there will be a break. There will be a break. There can't be an expectation that if you're Bruno Fernandes, you're playing three games a week, then you go straight into the World Cup where you play three games a week. Because remember, the World Cup games are every four days. Um, a World Cup is ridiculously demanding, as you know. And then you can't do three games a week for your club, three games a week for your, for your country in the World Cup, and then come back and start doing three games a week again for your club until May. You just can't do that. So clubs are, and it's not been really addressed yet because it's probably not, people haven't really realised, but if you're Bruno Fernandes and you get knocked out in the semi-final of the World Cup, I believe the semi-final of the World Cup is around the sort of, around the 10th, 12th, 13th of December. Well, United are playing on Boxing Day, which is probably sort of 10 days after that. I don't think if you get to the semi-final of the World Cup, you're playing on Boxing Day. I think clubs will say you've got to have a week total rest, at least. So we will have to monitor that as the World Cup goes on because it's definitely going to happen. There's not. I mean, I don't know who... Look, Casemiro, the, the big ones are Brazil are one of the favourites. So if Casemiro and Anthony are playing in the World Cup final on the 18th of December, it's only a week later that you're playing on Boxing Day. There is no way Casemiro and Anthony are playing on Boxing Day. They're going to, if they win the World Cup, you've got the party and everything like that. You've got recuperation. They might not come back until New Year. No one's talking about this, but it's going to happen. So I think some fans and some journalists and some people think that, you know, Casemiro can play three games a week, go and play a load of games for Brazil, win the World Cup on the 18th, and then come back and play on Boxing Day. It won't be allowed to happen even if the player wants it to happen, because you just can't do that. You're going to burn out. So there will be plans. Ten Hag hinted at it, and there will be plans in place. Um, and, yeah, I mean, how you compute that is up to you. Do you, you know, do you want Casemiro to be winning the World Cup now? Because it could impact us um, later on. But this is the genius of FIFA, allowing a tournament to be played at this stage with a, such a congested season either side of it. Um, but look, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But all in all, really good questions and a really good interview from Eric Ten Hag. Um, I will be back live at eight o'clock, but I wanted to react to this, even though it was a later press conference release, because I just thought the questions were brilliant and it was great to have that interaction with Ten Hag. And uh, we've got some really good answers out of it. Thanks so much for watching. Smash a like on the video, get your comments in below. I'll see you live at eight o'clock.